Greetings and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today it is a lovely morning in November 2022 and I'm in my backyard. Today we're doing a fall garden tour where I'm going to walk around and talk about some of the things that I'm currently growing in this garden bed here and I'm going to talk about some of the fruit trees in my backyard orchard and I'm going to try to face the camera because I've got this new expensive, uh, I don't know, it's not that expensive. It's a iPhone 13 rig setup uh, that we're going to use to film all this. So I'm really excited. I was doing some testing with my new camera this morning and it gets great definition on some of the stuff like my first lane here. And so I've done all my filming previously, well most of it, with a GoPro Hero 8. And the GoPro served me well for a while, but I've been super impressed with some of the cameras that they've got on iPhones lately. I think it's really cool. So we're going to take a look at all of the things here in my backyard garden. And I think we're going to start by talking about some of my fruit trees. But before I get into all the business with the fruit trees, I kind of want to explain what's been going on with the YouTube channel and with my investment in gardening over the past couple of years. So I have a ton of stuff going on with regards to gardening, obviously. Um, if you're from Austin, you've seen the weather, then you'll know how can I have pineapples out here with the cold front that we have coming this weekend? Well, I can't and I, I need to move them into my garage and October was just a whirlwind of stuff going on for me and my family. For those of you who don't know, I am currently working on my Masters of Divinity at a Reformed Baptist Seminary and that consumes a ton of my time. I have all this reading to do and it's great and it's something that I'm super passionate about and want to do. Uh, but that means hobbies like gardening just get to take a back seat. And that means my garden has been su uh, suffering from just a ton of neglect. So I had to flip my mic around there, but this is my garden as of today. We've got basil that's gone out to seed. I planted some purslane in here, which was a huge mistake. I've got to tear up all of this purslane because uh, for the record, if you don't know what purslane is, it's this beautiful flowering succulent right here. Made a couple of videos on purslane recently. And while I think it looks great and it tastes kind of like a Granny Smith apple, you know, it's a, it's a really cool plant. I discovered recently it's toxic to dogs. So uh, my dog, uh, you know, we've caught her thrown up a couple of times and we want to make sure she stays alive. So we're going to tear up all of this purslane, get it out of here, put it in containers in the front yard. And then of course I made a video recently on ants. So I don't know if these are the same ants that we got out of our pineapple containers here in my last video, but this is part of the neglect. We've got ants all over the place. And the, the beauty of fire ants in a garden, most people see fire ants in a garden and they're immediately alarmed and want to kill them. And I probably will put orange oil on these ants to, to get rid of them. But the beauty of them is you don't have spider mites. Like these jalapenos are, uh, you know, they've been here all season and suffered very, very little issues with pests. I mean, on my fig tree here, if I zoom in, you can see kind of a couple little bites there. And this is what I meant with the new camera. Look at that. If it, it's doing all self-directed autofocusing right now. So hopefully that'll turn out okay. But for example, like with my eggplant over here, this is an eggplant that has been on the vine way too long. I don't know why I haven't cut it off yet, but this is the kind of thing I'm used to seeing back there. And so if I move some of those leaves out of the way, I don't know if that's the fire ants doing. I suspect it's a pest that the fire ants may be killing off, um, which I kind of appreciate the fire ants presence. But Fire ant nests in my garden are a perfect example of what I was referring to when I say that this garden has been suffering from neglect. Um, in addition to all of my graduate school studies, I also had an appendectomy uh, in the middle of October. So I've just had no strength and gardening requires a lot of physical strength. I, I don't know if it's obvious from these containers, but like, uh, and I realized I was gonna jump in front of the mic, but my mic kinda, you know what? I have an idea, me it like this and I bet I bet you can still hear me great if my mic is angled like that um, these containers here uh, I'm kind of standing in front of them like this for scale to show you how big they are these are some big pineapples I'm trying to get my balance there right those are some big pineapples we got like three four foot uh, almost that one in the back's nearly four feet tall uh, at the tip and they're kind of heavy and so if you've had an appendectomy in the past you'll know Man, it's been really, really difficult to, to take care of these plants and they need to go into the garage under a heat lamp for the winter. Um, 
which has made gardening really, really difficult. But the cool thing that we're going to do today is, uh, well, I'm actually not going to do it today, but over the next couple of days and in this video, um, I'm going to bring in some, uh, some nice compost and mulch and clean up this raised bed, take the stuff out of the raised bed that we don't want to be in there like the purslane. And also, I'm gonna pull up these lattices and we're gonna start a fall and winter garden. I've always had trouble with cabbage in the past. Spider mites always take out my cabbage. And maybe if I planted some cabbage and left in the fire ants, um, you know, we'd have some cabbage this year. But I think we're gonna try some carrots this year. Try not to make it too complicated. It's obvious that any of all the peppers and stuff will be gone very soon. So we're gonna do a jalapeno harvest and bring of all, well, borderline, some of these are almost chilies now, like, see this one has been on here just way too long, but they're still blooming. That's what those flowers are right there. Um, and it's not just the jalapenos that are blooming. I have some poblanos down here that got a couple little flowers on them, so. There are still a lot of things that we are able to grow in November, but this is just a complete neglect garden, and I wanna see what we're able to grow being intentional about actually planting things. So let's get started. It's now Thursday evening and I've bought a couple bags of soil for revitalizing our garden bed here, which is what I'm gonna be working on for a little bit. Over here on the left, this is a pretty generic raised bed and potting mix bag. This is actually what's in most of this raised bed. And this soil's pretty crummy, but not the worst. You can kind of see how the soil has compacted over the past year. It's come down about two inches. And although it's not awesome quality, um, this raised bed has still put off a whole bunch of tomatoes and cucumbers and jalapenos and all sorts of things. So this, this generic raised bed potting soil is still sufficient. Uh, the next thing I'm using is some miracle Grow potting mix. So why do I use this? Well, I figure the raised bed is just kind of like one really large big container. And so, <laughs> Um, these potting mixes uh, have a whole bunch of perlite uh, for good drainage, fertilizer uh, comes right in it, and also they retain water really well, which I'm not having any problems with water retention. In fact, I'm probably having too much of a problem with water retention, but cutting in a little bit of potting mix does give me that fertilizer. So speaking of fertilizer, I've got some organic manure, uh, just very small amount, and then just some more generic miracle Grow raised bed soil. So a bunch of this stuff is not the most awesome. I was hoping to order some quality soil from a soil yard, which I do intend to do at some point this winter uh, to amend some of the really nasty clay soil that we have in this yard. But that is not the project for today. The project for today is to get this raised bed looking a little bit better, get the fire ants cleared out and get this ready for the rest of the fall and the winter. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is remove my cucumber trellises and get my dead organic material from the basil and the cucumbers out of here to avoid spreading fungus. And then next, I'm going to come in and turn up some of the soil. So I'm breaking up roots, breaking up dense soil that's compacted, and just generally aerating the soil. I'm digging about a foot down with a hand trowel to aerate the soil and also transplant some of my jalapeno plants. Now, not all of this work can be done in a day. I worked on it a little bit Thursday night so that by Friday morning, I could just be planting my carrots, my radishes, my cabbage, and the dill, and generally spreading around the soil which I purchased to get the raised bed ready. It is a beautiful Friday morning, about 7.30. One of the rare times I can actually work on this because even though I work from home, work keeps me pretty busy and gardening takes a lot of time. I had to also work on a lot of this last night and I don't like gardening in the dark, but thankfully we are done. And it is probably raining while you're watching this. Um, we've got a ton of storms about to roll in, but thankfully everything's planted and it's a little messy because I decided just not to water it in. I Watering the garden in before I film these videos makes it a little more presentable because you know you don't have this soil all over the, the place and everything's much more uniform and settled like it's very obvious I just put down <laughs> you know all this compost and fertilizer and stuff and so that being said I think it's fine the state that the garden's in and I'm going to talk about it left to right 
So the first thing is this basil. I got rid of some basil previously and I'm planning on taking these basil seeds and putting them in little seed packets, uh, which I have in my home, but I've already gone along here and it's super easy to remove these seeds, not super easy with one hand, but I've gone along here and just pulled some basil seeds and just tossed them in our bed because I'd like some more basil next year. Obviously I'm gonna take that back with some of the plants that are going in the garage and our general trash wheelbarrow bin there. But I also noticed this, uh, this eggplant here is kind of sitting in a little bit of a hole. Since I've added this soil, it's kind of raised the ground level. So we're gonna just take this eggplant off. It's still a little tiny, but this might be as big as he's gonna get. Kind of funny discoloration on the bottom there and you can see some pests got to him. Um, but this eggplant did super well. I started this eggplant from a seed in January this year. So now that it's November, it's almost run its full course. I think we might get one more month out of it, but when the hard freezes start rolling through, uh, we'll be done with the eggplant. Of course, we have more eggplant seeds. This plant has yielded about three eggplants this year. I'm just gonna stick this bad boy here. Um, and it was not anywhere near as successful as the tomato plants or the cucumber plants, but obviously those have run their course as well. So we're done with that. And then I planted uh, some dill, it's recognizable and cabbage, just two cabbages this year. I planted like 30 cabbages last year. And I don't know if it was the lack of fire ants or something else, but we had these spider mites that just totally ruined these cabbages. These are supposedly quote, 45 day cabbages. I don't know what kind of, you know, breed of cabbage that is, but I doubt these are gonna turn out well. So I also got some carrots. I'm growing these carrots from a seed. Uh, the seed packet that I'm using to do this has some instructions on the back, which basically explain that I'm planting these too late. Uh, today's, I think, November the 11th, might be the 10th, I'm not sure. Um, obviously, these say to plant uh, September to October in Texas, um, or at least in, in zone eight, probably a little bit of zone seven as well. And so these are all sowed uh, about an eighth of an inch under the surface. You can't see them because the seeds are so tiny. And I was going to look around for a seed, maybe still sitting on the surface. I don't think you're going to see them. But... Hopefully we do get some carrots as the, the fall rolls on. And we're clearly going to have a fall yield because we already have tomatoes. This is my beefsteak tomato plant. I've made a lot of videos about it. If you want to see it much more lively and healthy, you can see the same plant in my June or maybe July garden tour video. Uh, this plant by itself has yielded nearly 15 pounds of food in the form of beefsteak tomatoes this year. And it pollinates really well when the daytime temperature, or excuse me, nighttime temperature is between about 50 and maybe about 85. And so we're gonna have nighttime temperatures in the 30s soon, meaning this guy is making his last stand. We've got this kind of zombie bit of the tomato plant behind here where you can see that is the same tomato plant. Like this green right there might not be obvious, but it's coming straight out of what looks to be a dead tomato plant. Uh, it's kind of turned into wood here. And so I've purchased a new uh, beefsteak tomato plant, which is green all the way to the base because my other one that was over here died. And this one is likewise yielding some fruit. So these tomatoes get to be pretty big, about as big as my fist here. So we will keep an eye out and see how they continue to turn out. And this here is an LSU gold fig tree. My dog has gotten to enjoy most of the figs on this tree. Sugar always makes her way into this bed. And one of the reasons why I've been doing all this work in general is because the purslane that was previously in this raised bed, which I've moved to mostly containers or thrown out, is toxic to sugar, even though it has beautiful ornamental flowers and it tastes good. It tastes kind of like a Granny Smith apple. Um, we're still, still getting rid of it. So sugar can continue to enjoy the figs though. And these figs are, uh, if I can get my focus there, they're sort of mature. I think they stopped maturing as quickly once I transplanted the tree. But this fig tree, I mean, it's still putting off new leaves. So we've got, you know, new growth. My autofocusing will do what it's supposed to. It doesn't want to. That's okay. Uh, we, we have some new growth and the fig tree is looking lively. I think that I, I'm somewhat, I'm not really concerned about the roots. Obviously this raised bed is uh, about three feet wide. Um, well, that's not obvious if you haven't been watching my videos. It's 20 feet long and three feet wide, which may insulate some of the roots. 
um, on this fig tree, I know that the rest of my fig trees, which are in my backyard orchard, and I will get into talking about this backyard orchard here in a minute, the rest of my fig trees are all in ground. And even though some of them are mounded up a little bit, they are not going to have the type of exposure that I'm talking about here. And if, if you're wondering what I mean by exposure, I mean the cold. When it gets to be 30 degrees, those roots are like this plant right there. Those roots are in ground. They're going to stay warm. Those roots are kind of mounded up. They will probably stay warm. These roots are going to have exposure on two sides. They're going to have this side and then the other side um, are going to be below freezing. And so hopefully our fig tree will pull through. I know this raised bed seems like a strange place for it, but I figure the soil here is such higher quality than the dense clay soil of my backyard. So we'll just see how it turns out. And if it provides a little bit of shade to my raised bed here, that will actually be a good thing because then I'll be able to get full sun and partial sun in my raised bed. The raised bed I mentioned in a couple of previous videos, but it is on the north side of my backyard. So in the winter, the sun this is a perfect example because it's November right now. Oh, no, it's not because the sun's gone because the thunderstorms are coming. But the sun's like kind of right around there right now. And in the winter, the sun likes to travel about like that. And so it stays behind my house for most of the day. And the shadow lengthens all the way to the raised bed, which you've probably seen in some previous videos, which actually means this raised bed is full sun. So because it's full sun, we've had huge success with jalapeno peppers. Back in July, I pickled probably about 50 jalapeno peppers, and we have an entire another full crop here from just these four plants. Jalapenos are probably one of my favorite things to grow. They go great with tomatoes, obviously. Um, they have a ton of different cooking purposes, and I just like them raw. I've always liked really spicy food, and so growing jalapenos, I feel like I, I wouldn't quite say that they are like, uh, when I think of jalapenos, I think more of Mexico than of Texas, but um, one of my favorite plants. Very cool. So these are going in containers likewise for the obvious. While these thrive in summer, um, similar to the pineapples and uh, right, really pineapples are the, one of the few similar things. Um, if it freezes, they will surely die. There's not a chance. And so we have some Anaheim peppers down here by the bottom that are gonna join them in the garage. And we will see how that turns out. So when I'm done talking about the backyard orchard and the trees and stuff and this raised bed, I'll go over and take a look at the plants that are going into the garage. If you're interested in seeing that, uh, it should be a chapter timestamp explaining when I'm going to do that. So finally, um, I wanted to explain what I was kind of doing on that time lapse. So the soil, when I first filled up this bed, the soil was about right there, uh, about an inch from the top. And before I started working on it, it was a little lower than that, about four inches from the top. So the soil's compressed about two or three inches over the past year. And I didn't just throw a whole bunch of soil on top of that, but rather I went in and I was breaking up, I'm gonna show what I was doing. I was breaking up about a foot of soil by just, you know, digging around here. And this is a great way to aerate soil. And I know I'm not going a foot deep now, but I did before, which is why it's aerated. <laughs> Um, and so I'm going to fill in that hole, but, um, I went around the entire bed and stirred up about a foot of soil because a lot of the soils become so compact. It's going to be really difficult for the plants to get their roots down into it. And by aerating the soil in that way, um, we're just increasing, uh, the success, uh, the chance of success for a lot of these plants, especially through the winter. So that uh, I think was going to be pretty good. And I might have to come back around and smooth out some of the edges on this, but I think ultimately after it rains, we're going to see um, this compacted down quite a bit more. Anyway, um, maybe not quite a bit more, maybe another inch, you know. Um, but anyway, I just noticed a little purslane here that I'm going to need to get rid of. So I'm going to take this bad boy to the trash pile. Don't worry, I'm not throwing away this basil take that inside to strip the seeds off and so finally we've got some uh, strawberries these are strawberries these are strawberries and the strawberries did very well earlier in the year when it was um, springtime and the conditions are similar to springtime right now as I'm filming this video but we're gonna get at least a week of what I refer to as Texas winter uh, here in, <laughs> here in about, honestly, about 
you know, 10 hours. So uh, when that thunderstorm finishes rolling through, it'll be pretty cold. I'm expecting the strawberries to die and that's okay. I'm not going to try to bring them in the garage. I'm not going to try to um, make them survive the winter. These strawberries, I paid probably $2 a piece at Green and Growing. I'm just going to start new starters next year or maybe start from seed. And this is a thornless blackberry plant. I don't know if it's going to make it through the winter. And ultimately, I don't really care. Um, it's, it's a neat plant. And if it makes it through the winter, then this is its permanent home. If it doesn't, uh, cucumbers will take its place in the spring. And then finally, I've got three rows of radishes that you can't see here that I planted from these radish seeds. I have heard a lot of people say that 8B radishes are a great thing to grow. If you are from the Austin area and you're looking for something to grow, you can see from my little seed packet there, it's saying August to November, you still have plenty of time, uh, 22 to 25 days to harvest. I, I do not believe that, but we're about to find out. So maybe you can watch the December garden tour find out if that actually grew in 25 days. But I'm excited. I think it'll be something new to do. And ultimately, um, just bring some life to this garden in a season where otherwise there would not be. So moving on, I want to talk a little bit. Let me put this back and just set this here and pick it up later. Okay, so moving on, I want to talk a little bit about my backyard orchard. While the braised bed is really neat, I've got a 4,000 square foot backyard here, and I've planted a ton of fruit trees in it. Over the past year, I have removed a few, and even just last month, I planted four fig trees, got rid of two really tiny fig trees, and also planted two Granny Smith apple trees. The total number of fruit trees on my property right now is about 19, about 19, it's 19. And so um, I'm gonna go around and talk about these fruit trees a little bit. It obviously being fall, they are kind of in a different phase of their life cycle than some of the previous garden tours. So in total, I have eight peach trees. These are peach trees here. And I've got five fig trees, memory serves, three olive trees, two Granny Smith apple trees, and uh, a tangerine tree. That's not right, it's a mandarin tree in the front yard. So the peach trees were the first things I planted. These peach trees, I did a video called Backyard Orchard. <laughs> uh, maybe I named it something else. It was, a, it was a picture of like a blooming peach tree in my backyard when I planted all of these peach trees last fall. So this one in the corner is a real grand peach tree. And essentially these peach trees had a really good spring. Um, I saw a ton of green growth on them. And even this late in the season, they're still really healthy. I'm seeing a little bit of yellow on the canopy here, which is totally expected as it is fall. This tree should turn totally yellow and drop its leaves soon. But this, honestly, even though it's one of my smallest peach trees, this is the ideal peach tree. This is what the ideal peach tree form looks like. <laughs> and what I mean by that, I'm obviously joking a little bit, but what I mean by that is it's dropped so few leaves over the drought. This tree, peach tree, no doubt, has a healthy root system. And I'm really surprised by that because it's one of the lowest levels in my backyard. I would expect it to be waterlogged, but it's doing very well. This tree likewise is doing pretty well, but you'll see the canopies thinner. So it's just obvious if you put them side by side, one has a, a bit fewer leaves than the other. Maybe it's just the size of the tree needing less uh, resources, the smaller one I mean. But these, uh, the one in the back is a Rio Grande. And then this one here is a Royal Zest as are these next two we'll be looking at. And as I keep going, we, we just see our trees getting thinner and thinner. So here is another Royal Zest tree. And once again, I, I'm assuming the issue here is the density of the clay soil in my backyard. Some of these trees, of course, when I say there's a problem, I wanna be super clear. These trees are healthy. They are in good condition. If there was a bigger problem, they would have been dead by now because they've been here for, um, it's like almost, 15 months. However, they're not in ideal conditions. And for them to have a little bit of yellow here isn't a problem. It's November. It's the thinness of the canopy. In, in, in fact, this one is fine, but the thinness of the canopy on this one is a red flag to me that there might be some issues in the future. Now, there's not necessarily going to be issues in the future, but it's possible. So I want to um, put some 10, 10, 10 mulch around here and just try to improve uh, the nutrition that this tree is getting. Um, really all my trees, which I've not done a proper fertilization yet, but I do plan on seeding my yard shortly. So um, I will fertilize when I do that. 
I've also got some olive trees in containers, and this one still has all the purslane around it. I'm going to have to gather this up and pot it. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take the cold weather to kill it, but uh, I'm sure the purslane is also sapping some of the life from this little olive tree. And so we will get that cleared out, make sure our dog does not get poisoned. And then over here in the back, this is one of the Celeste fig trees that I planted. So this tree is doing well, but it was just planted a month ago, and I planted it a little bit too early in the season. So there was still a lot of heat when I planted it. The ideal time to plant this tree would have been like this week or next week, kind of in the cold. Uh, now, obviously not when it's below freezing, um, not that that's a, a huge deal if the tree's in the ground, but the tree's doing well enough. It's got some new growth on it, and I definitely think it will be doing great in this corner. And if you didn't spot that, uh, my wife planted some mint in the back corner of our garden here. So this will be the mint corner. Moving forward in the years to come, all of this will be mint, I'm sure, and might even pose a problem at some point. But for right now, I'm not going to worry about the mint. We've likewise got another Celeste fig tree here. And um, the, the, this side of the yard is totally symmetrical. Well, mostly symmetrical. Um, we've got another fig tree and then weeds around this, um, what is this, a Tex Prince? This is a La Feliciana peach tree. Uh, this is a Tex Prince. And this, this peach tree has just been so battered and bruised. It was actually one of the reasons I built my French drain in the first place, which you can see in the background there, because this tree was always getting waterlogged. And then after the water problem was solved from the French drain, it, it died in the drought. <laughs> it didn't get enough water. So this is a perfect example of what it's like gardening in Texas or just generally like trying to maintain things that do not grow uh, naturally in Texas. And my focus is wanting to show everybody the grass when I'm trying to zoom in on this branch here. The tree is very much still alive. Now that being said, I'm not really sure I still want it in my yard because it's just been so brutally punished. And I think another a problem with it was just the way I planted it in general. Um, this tree, uh, you can see the grass is totally filled in the hole that I planted it in. It must've been about 18 inches around. I think maybe I just should have dug a bigger hole and mounded it up with some more quality soil so its roots could spread out a little bit bigger. I don't know if that's the reason it died because the drought this year was, was crazy. I mean, if you're, you might be watching this years in the future, in which case I'll just say we had, I think three months between rainstorms this summer. So it was pretty rough, but this fig tree in the back here got a ton of new growth on it. Man, my focusing is just totally copped out at this point. There you go. Ton of new growth on it. Looking great. And I'm going to have to go through here and do some weeding. I'm hoping to get started on that after um, it starts raining. Uh, what am I saying? It starts raining. I mean, uh, after, after the freeze. Um, so this is the, this is the tree from my, uh, garden tour, uh, video that I made last year. It is a Tex Prince peach tree and it's doing all right. It dropped some of its leaves at the end of the drought in summer, but they were, they grew back and I'm sure about to yellow up and fall off now. So I'm hoping for a better season shortly, <laughs> you know, a better season in the spring, but for the time being, I can tell we're probably at the 30 minute mark on this video. So let's wrap this up. Um, one more, what is this? Uh, text prints as well. So these are all text prints. And if I line them up like this, you can see this side of the yard. This is the, uh, what is this? The Eastern, no, the Western side of the yard is just not looking awesome. Super thin canopies, trees just getting pulverized, which is surprising to me. Cause I would expect this, this side of the yard gets more sun, the West side, the East side up against that fence over there is actually doing a lot better. So we'll just kind of see how that pans out over the years to come. Finally, I planted this Granny Smith apple tree. I said I planted two, the other one's in the front yard. Planted this very recently, like two, three days ago. And I love Granny Smith apples. They're one of my favorite fruits. I've obviously been comparing the purslane to them. And so I planted this here and you might think that's a huge mulch volcano. You'd be kind of right. It is a whole bunch of um, compost and raised bed soil and uh, mounded up uh, loamy black soil that is 
over a hole that's about two and a half feet around. So this is exactly what I said I should have done with that tree over there in the corner. Now, obviously I might be exposing some of this Granny Smith apple trees roots to some of the cold, but being Granny Smith, these are suited for zone five to eight. So, oh man, my focusing is just killing me today. Zone five to eight. So obviously zone five, you're gonna be getting feet of snow. Uh, we are zone 8B, so we're right on the southern side of the recommendation for growing these trees, meaning, man, that's almost unusable. I think I stopped auto-focusing, so my, my camera has just decided that it's going to focus on whatever it wants to today. Um, anywho, this tree, I'm sure will survive whatever cold we can throw at it. It's leaning a little bit, so I might get some stakes for it, but ultimately, I'm very excited to be adding this to my backyard. So with that, let's take a look at the plants that we're gonna stick in my garage shortly. So I'm out front with my neighbor's yappy dogs and I don't know if that's audible, uh, but there's lots of dogs yapping this morning. And also my avocado plant are pineapples and a couple of fig trees I've rooted in the backyard because there was just so much overcrowding with all the fruit trees that I have. If you'd like to buy one of those fig trees, they're little tiny trees, uh, yeah, like that one there in that container. And um, I will happily sell you one for $15 or $25, depending on its size. I've got one tiny one and two large ones. So if you're interested in that, shoot me a DM. Obviously, avocado tree is doing, I want to say great, but it probably needs to be transplanted to a larger container. And the pineapple trees, if we can get them through one more winter, I do think we'll get pineapples. So. Right now my garage is full of lumber because we're working on these home construction projects. But today uh, we're gonna clear it out as some of the builders are coming to work on our upstairs. And once there's space for these plants in the garage, we're gonna stick them in there under the grow lights like we did last year. So with that, thank you for joining me for this update. It's always fun to walk around my backyard and talk about all the plants that I have and what I plan to do with them. So with that being said, thank you again for watching Austin, Texas Gardening. Make sure to subscribe, stay tuned. I'm gonna have more videos, like videos on the radishes, videos on how these plants turn out in the garage. So uh, like I said, make sure to stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.